Well, it's a beautiful muggy day here in St. Louis. And I thought I'd, because I can't work on this guitar right now, it's a little bit too damp to spray. I thought I'd start on my sweetie's neck, this beautiful bird's eye. I'm making two necks. I'm gonna cut this in half lengthwise. First step. And uh, gotta thank the dearly departed Hoopa Johnny. Gone but not forgotten, bro. He gave this to me for some bartering at some point. All righty, I'm gonna cut this sucker. Perfect. Got enough maybe for four next, probably two. We'll see. Here's the sweetheart of the blues and she has picked this one. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to, I want you to hold it like it would be a neck. So, yeah, just to kind of get an idea mm -hmm. of, uh, I think probably slide it this way because this is probably where it's going right, to get cut off. Right, right. It'll be so about this like be, this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, gorgeous, right? All right, we're mm -hmm. proceeding on. So this is my ramp. You can see it goes up and down. I hope you can see that. ride the route around there so it goes up and back down. This is going to be the back of the neck. That's the back of the neck. Higher here than here or here. So when you tighten it, it will pull the bow out of the neck push down in the center and pull up on the sides, straightening the neck. So the story goes. All right, here's my jig. So it's gonna ride up, up and down on this sled. It's gonna go all the way over to here and it's gonna hit that stop and that's as far as it's going, right to there. Also, over on this side, there's a stop right there. It's going to stop right there. And I'm going to make it to the depth. Quarter inch. It's going to be... The depth is going to be... Uh, the bottom of the truss rod cavity. Or the truss rod hole for the truss rod tightener loosener screw a la the old style fender this is the back of the neck so i'm actually making two necks this is the first one which is for my base it's practice run for making my sweetie's neck the sweetheart of the blues so in case I screw it up which never happens I uh, get a little practice in so far this one came out pretty good I'm gonna lay out the second one and do the same thing this is the truss rod channel all route made out alrighty here's the sweetheart of the blues neck Here's the jig, got the arch here. It's an arch and uh, got some spacers in there, which I cut to, to uh, accommodate the width of this board. And then this is the uh, outer blocking the uh, router from going either way. And then you get down here and there's the block to stop the router. It's a lot of setup, but it does a nice clean job. It's pretty dead center. Close enough for who it's for. The sweetheart of the blues. And here's Miss Ladies, or Adriana Marie, the sweetheart of the blues. I gave her the prettier 
uh, piece per her request, because she's prettier than I am. Here's an idea. Put a straight edge or ruler on the fret line and score it first. Score it first with your trusty little razor blade. Hopefully, that'll keep your trusty fret saw from wandering. Once again, with a sharp tool and a dull mind, there's nothing you can't accomplish. All right, now that the fret slots are all cut, next up, I'm gonna drill a small hole straight through the headstock. What I did was I laid the template down and I just sprayed white paint in there exactly where the holes are gonna go. And now I'm gonna, I found the center and I'm gonna do that on all of them and then with the drill press, drill a small hole straight. Here's a nice way to find the center of the hole. So first, I take my trusty little ruler and I find 20. So, 20, right? Right there, okay. Then I draw a line and mark 10. So right in the center of that line. And I do another one, and another one, and then using my ruler as a square, like that, draw a line, like that. Then I do the other two. That's dead center. I'm gonna dr drill a hole straight through the headstock like this. Use a brad point bit. Cuts down. <laughs> preparation for cutting the slut knot I, I i mean nut slot here thanks to my cool uh i don't know what you call this thing these days i can't use any words anymore it's an apparatus there nobody nobody's uh offended by that so this apparatus is going to help me in cutting a nice straight eighth inch slot I've had a flexible shaft since I was just a young teenager. I highly recommend the Fordham over the Dremel. Anyways, thanks to my buddy and fellow co-patriot, Bob Hart, for this copy that he made on his laser device. I'm going to cut that. It's all lined up. I got to go to work and fix other people's stuff today, but I'll be back. So I've been agonizing over what to do next. Should I cut the swoop in the headstock? Should I cut the outline out first and then cut the swoop? Or should I level the, the headstock and then cut the swoop? I'm thinking of cutting the swoop first. I'm going to use this bullnose router. And I'm going to cut it right down like that, straight across. 
And then I think from there, I'm going to cut out the outline and then level it. That's what I think. And uh, I've got two chances to make it wrong. All righty. Here's my jig. Sorry, can't use that word, I think. I don't know. Without insulting someone, here's my apparatus for cutting the swoop. The swoop. My router's just going to back up against that, and it's just going to freaking cut right through there, about three or four passes, and I should have a nice swoopage going on there. Alrighty, old sweetie. I like it. Next, I'm going to cut the outline, the modified tele outline, of course, which I don't have a template for, but that's all right. I'm going to cut the outline out and then, sorry, and then Take it down, all the way down, to that nice fat half inch there. Then you drill the truss rod hole. All righty, I'm gonna do my sweetheart's neck. Now that I didn't screw this neck up, yet, onward. And here's my sweetie's neck. Next. And here's the sweetheart of the blues doing a dry fit of her new neck. <laughs> it's coming along. Yep. All righty. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this purple heart from my sweetheart's dots on her neck. And I'm going to make some quarter inch dots. How are you going to do that? Good question. I'm going to take this hole driller. It happens to be a quarter inch, and I'm going to just drill some out on my uh, trusty drill press. Let's see how that works out. So on my neck, making two necks, remember, so on the neck going on my base, I'm going to make a big headstock-ish. Here's my rig. I'm just going to cut the shape out right now. First step of course, is just cut some of the uh, excess off with the bandsaw so we're not hogging off six inches of wood with the poor router. I'm keeping the neck square for now because I'm going to uh, do some uh, drilling for the, uh, the dots. I'm keeping that square for now. Here's the first pass. All right. Time to keep going. Okay, then. Now I'll remove the uh, template and using the edge of the actual neck itself, cut it on down size. All right, so this is the practice neck, and I got the outline all cut out. So I don't have a bandsaw at home here, so I hogged off some with the table saw up to about there and up to about here. And then I'm going to cut the rest of this with, uh, with my trusty Black & Decker uh, saber saw. And uh, yeah, it's just to kind of give my router a break in my routering carving. Well, it's a mess till it isn't. Here's the Sweetheart of the Blues neck so far. Next step is to take the headstock down to half an inch. Nice, huh? A P-style base.
All right, continuing my two base hit. Here's my uh, headstock planing rig. The sweetie of my life gave me this years ago for my birthday. And I made this base, this uh, base for the base. And I'll tell you, with a sharp tool and a dull mind, once again, there's nothing you can't accomplish. So, experiment with my neck first, and then uh, my sweetheart's neck next. I'm going to save all this sawdust for next time I send uh, Bill O'Dell something. I can pack it with this. It'll be great. And here's the sweetheart of the blues. The sweetheart of the blues's neck. All right, nice telly shape. Ready for the truss rod hole. And this is the start of the truss rod. First, I thread this in a little bit to a threaded rod then I hunt down a nut then you crank that nut up against the unthreaded portion of the rod now this is a work in progress I haven't tried this yet I'm hoping this don't fail I'm hoping I hope that she don't fail as muddy waters would say and then I'm gonna put a lock washer in between these two and crank the bejeebus out of it. Then I put it up against the wall motor scooter. Then with my small Acme banjo mute, I'm gonna peen that end, sorry, peen that end over. I'll tell you, these banjo mutes are pretty handy to have around the house. I don't think that's coming out anytime soon. All righty. And there's the first truss rod. I had a change of heart. I had a change of heart and I just put one nut in there with it peened over nicely. I thought it was going to be a little too much for that neck to swallow two nuts. I'm just going to leave that right there. Uh-huh. Here it is. Clean up nicely. Progress on the necks. Got the truss rod successfully installed. Now I'm going to make the back skunk stripe and I'm going to make it out of purple heart in honor of the pink paisley that these are going to be uh well, not both of them but what the heck I'll make them both out of there that way all for one and one for all so now I'm going to use this neck jig to cut the line here like that glue that sucker in and then rinse and repeat okay i got this cut and fit pretty snug to where i feel like i can force it in and clamp it all the way down in there next thing i do is i put some weldwood contact cement down in some of the cavities just around the edges maybe every three or four inches i'm going to put some weld wood in there i like to use silicone but my silicone dries up after opening it once must be some kind of conspiracy but anyway fill in some of those so that the twist wad doesn't waddle now all i do here is just dwibble i just dwibble some Wubba cement in there so the twist wad doesn't waddle. All right, Elmer Fudd fans. And make sure you clean up any dwips 
form the web of cement. <laughs> Here's my crazy clamping rig. And thanks, Chewy, for sending my vice back. And here it is. Clamped. Jed. I clamped it, Jed. Unfortunately, Adriana's neck is going to have to wait patiently overnight because I want to let that dry up overnight. So I'm going to address um, the dots and the plugs. Plug on this one. And here's some of the purple heart dots glued in. No super glue for me and no plastic dots. So these are going to dry thoroughly. Then I'm going to cut them off and use the top half for these other ones here. Neck one, skunk stripe, clamps removed. Now I'm going to chisel it down some. And there's the spot on my neck where I screwed up. Let's wick some super glue in there. Let's not and say we did. And got the holes successfully drilled for the, I don't know, test dummy neck. No super glue? How do you call yourself a guitar technician? <laughs> Answer, I don't. Okay, I've got the holes drilled for the ferrules. And now I'm starting the very tedious task of by hand putting a 10 inch radius on this neck. Soon to be on the Sweetheart of the Blues's neck. Slowly with Shirley, ruthlessly. I wonder where Ruth is. After careful consideration with the witness, my pal, I decided to go with a uh, a 14 radius. Um, so I'm just going to remove these pencil marks with my 14 block and move on. Oh my mm. God. Here's the sweetheart of the blues in her natural habitat examining her soon future to be <laughs> neck. Wow. Wow. Oh Let's take a gosh. close look. Look at the neck. Look at all the bird's eye. Yeah, you can't really see in this light. <gasps> yes, I can see it. Look, look, there, 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 there. I, can't I can't see. Oh. Okay. Wow. Okay, here's a better shot in the daylight. Ooh, yes, they're coming along. Uh huh. Let's see what Sugar thinks of it. She's extra cautious. Yeah. All righty, I've got that like flattened out. One little spot right there. And uh, sorry, not flattened out. Radius. Check this out. Yeah, you can start to see what that's gonna look like with all the bird's eyes in there. Nice, huh? Lots of baby birds in there. Robins, cardinals, eagles, you name it. Sweetheart wants this neck to match this neck. So here's my rig. Clamp it down. I got my profile gauge and my shear form, and I'm just get medieval on this sucker. Kind of like that. Oh, yeah. Much gnashing of teeth. I had to remove the strip in the center of this neck because I inadvertently clamped a serious backbow 
into uh, the neck in my attempt to uh, force the, um, the skunk stripe too tightly into the slot. So I had to remove it. And this one, I just put a piece of walnut in there, basically finger tight. These uh, clamps are really just to hold, uh, just kind of for drill. Here's a first tentative joining. Quite almost like a first date. Reckon I just about got this thing ready for fretting. I've got it dead straight a with a little bit of. I've got it dead straight on three planes um, with just a tiny bit of uh, tension on the truss rod. So there you go. Okay, I've got the fret slots recut. To the proper depth and uh, I didn't slice my finger in time for our afternoon uh, Adriana Marie and her groove cutters uh, gig so that's always a plus so uh, next I'm just going to double check the flatness of the neck and start pounding in the frets
Alrighty, that is ready to have some frets pounded in. Oh yeah, clean and nice. That's sanded to 220, by the way. And so it starts. So I skip around. I don't know if it's an old wives' tale or what, but you skip around so you don't cause fret-induced back bow. Fret-induced back bow. And the beat goes on. Here's a couple more tools I've had forever. This was my original bastard file, which I broke off and made this mahogany handle, kind of like Stumac has. Um, and now I've filed the side frets flat, wearing one of these. <laughs> And then the next thing I'm going to do is with my trusty fret rocker, I'm going to just check and see if there's any high spots. And if there are, I'm just going to tap them down before I file the tops. Just tap down any high spots. Okay, I think I've showed this in another video, but now that I've tapped the high spots down as much as they'll be tapped down, I'm going to take this trusty luthier pen and I'm just going to mark the tops of all the frets like that. And make sure you do the obligatory black mistake in the raw wood. And then now I take my fret file and I work this way this way kind of like where my beeps went um, you want this to be the highest fret and then they work downhill and you really boat ramp down here so you get a nice down here, downward slope if you go the other way everything's going to buzz like crazy try it and kind of like the way I'm leveling, like when I level the fretboard originally, I kind of work in three planes. You know, I'll do the outer, the inner, and then the other outer. So if you look, you can see that the frets are all level to one another now. See that? That's what you're looking for. And this is what you want when you're done. All shiny spots on the tops. There's one spot. Oh. No, that's just a trick of the light. They're shiny. All shiny spots. Except for that last one. I'll get that in a minute. Now, donning my glove again. I'm going to use my trusty Brown's Guitar Factory fret and beveler. Alrighty then. So with my fret edge beveler, I actually like to bevel, right? When I got a new board, I like to bevel the side of the board, the wood actually. I don't know if you can see that. Now that I've got the fret ends beveled, I'm gonna do my trusty rounding with my patented Stumac fret file. Alrighty, I got this whole neck sanded to 220. Just the way I like it. Nice and smooth. So here's the plan. So I'm going to uh, I'm gonna try and make a really transparent pink and I'm going to kind of just dust this headstock and then I'm going to put some aged lacquer as a color coat down here and uh, then proceed onward yeah all right looking good 
Well, I couldn't resist. Had to add some pink, because I'm in the pink. Really in the pink. Well, I made a mistake. So I couldn't find my dot material, so I thought I'd uh, use black super glue. And I've done this before and never had this happen. The capillary action, this came up from, from the hole. From the bottom of the hole, it leached up into the wood. That's not so bad, but this one, man, I can't believe how far that leached. I cannot get that out. That's like right through the veins of the wood. Ditto that. Look at that one. That appeared there after I filled this with super glue. Well, so my mistake is your lesson here, and I've learned so much from my mistakes. I think I'll make a few more. Yeah, make a few more. Amber. She said, don't make it look too yellow. That is the color coat right there, period. That's the way a Fender neck is supposed to look and an L.A. Jones neck. So there. My sweetheart, Adriana, has actually requested that I put my uh, custom decal on here and I thought, why not? Whatever she wants, she's the boss. Don't tell her that though. And of, of course, the only way to apply decals properly is to soak them in a bird bath first. If you don't use a bird bath, it just, it's not gonna have the same tone. Okay, well, the damage is done. It's not irreversible. I can sand it off if I want to. If she decides she wants something else on there. But for now, it's there. All righty. All right, so I've put several coats of clear over this. And now I'm doing just a light, light sanding of 320 over the whole thing before I continue to lay more clear. I believe this is going to be the final coat on this neck. I'm just going to let this dry out for about a week. And then uh, while in the buff, buff it out. All right, so I've got this uh, sanded out to, all right, so I got this sanded out to uh, 1200. And now I'm gonna, can't show myself, I'm gonna be in the buff and I'm gonna be buffing this out with uh, your uh, medium um, buffing compound. So I haven't removed the, the, uh, lacquer from the frets yet and that's simply because I don't want to get my buffing wheel full of metal it doesn't buff out the same and it's it's gonna scratch maybe a little bit is okay but yeah this is really getting there I'm gonna you know there's a couple of little flaws in there i'm just gonna leave them because she's gonna wear this neck out on the front but it looks pretty good so far like that i don't know i'm just gonna leave it she wants her base going i don't blame her now i've got this now i've got this guitar neck bass neck buffed where I want it. I'm going to take this. It's a uh, paint can opener, not to be confused with a church key. And I ground that little tip off of there like that. And I'm going to use that to uh, remove the lacquer. 
off of the fret there. Well, look at that. Would you please look at that? Now, when I drive screws in, I drill it out first. So I'm going to drill it out with this 1 16th drill. And then I'm going to use this. I know a lot of folks don't have this around the house. Uh, this is called soap. So I put a little soap on each screw before I drive it in there. I'm going to drill a hole, drive a screw, etc. And like that. All righty. Now I'm going to bolt the sap sucker onto the body. Screw, that is. So here's a piece of bone I stole from my dog. And I, I cut it uh, rough. So now I'm going to just shape it so it just almost fits into that slot. I'm going to shape it on my trusty big old grinding wheel. This one's got a lot of marrow in it. I may reject this. See all that? Yeah, I'm going to reject this one. Well, the bone gods were smiling on me because I found this one that fits right in the slot. Or close enough. I mean, that's a pretty damn tight fit, is it? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so now you got the nut fit where you want it. Nice and snug in that slot. I just take the pencil and I just kind of go like that. And uh, makes a rough outline of where you want it. Go When you grind it down, go above that line. Now, see how I angled it back slightly and evenly all the way across. So now you got it fit in there nice. All right, next step. Measure in one eighth of an inch on either side. Some people do the math, not me. I use this Dumac string spacing ruler and you can kind of line up these all chains. So you line up where your four fret slots are gonna be and just mark them and go for it. See how you got the three long marks, or sorry, four long marks? That's where your strings are gonna go. And you get your feeler gauges so that they uh, just pop down there. So you got just some action off of your frets. Now I've traced a line on the nut to that thickness. Or sorry, that height. And there you go. Now I'm going to cut at an angle this way. Or, this is better, I'm going to cut at an angle this way with each file down to that line. And that should be the nut, period. The first slot is a 45, so I use a 50. And make sure you're making a left-handed nut. Make sure you've cut the slots the right way. So this is left over here. That's the high string. Ha <laughs> ha. Don't think I haven't done that. Because I haven't. I mean, I have. And you file right down to that pencil line and then you polish it with your finer and finer grits of sandpaper staying away from the edge if it's fit already like this one a little loose I'm just going to polish the top and the ends alrighty I'm using my small nut vise for this Hey, Sugar, what's that noise? Sugar, what's that noise? Hey, you want to go see? I think it's the Lefty Bass Girl. Come on, come on. It's the Lefty Bass Girl, Sugar. It's the sweetheart of the blues. Come on. Hey, Adriana. What you got, babe? 